when you actually look at what happened, take Teesside, um, the steel industry was failing. So a, um, an Indian company, an uh, Indian super company, super corporation, uh, bought up the steelworks and said, oh, we'll do what we can, right? Okay. But they did actually nothing. They just ran down production for about five years and in the process accumulated carbon credits. You get carbon credits if you have a high production of CO2 and reduce it. You get given lots of credits, right? And then they said, oh, we can't do it. We're going to sell off the land, asset strip, and we're going to set up a new steelworks in India using European Union and the United Nations money to help, help new economies drop, go up. Okay. And we're going to use our carbon credits to set it up, because you can't set up things without carbon credits. Ah. So the MPs for North East England said, well, 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 wait a minute, you got these carbon credits from here, so we want them used to set up new industries here. And the European Union Emission Trading Scheme said, no, the owner takes all those carbon credits are going to be used elsewhere in India. So the British public paying the European Union and United Nations to exist are being robbed and paying for the destruction of our own industries to move them elsewhere where just as much CO2 is produced. And this is meant to be saving the planet. It is direct organised theft from the European Union. Which is why, one reason, just one reason why I'm for Brexit now, if not yesterday. Um, okay, yes, yeah, quick applause for Brexit now, but yesterday. And, which includes no deal Brexit, which quite frankly would be the best thing now, because then we keep our fish. Any other Brexit is a trick, and since we're sort of, this is a bit slight aside, but we suddenly got into that. Um, you just look at what the European Union's done. Um, after the war, Nye Bevin said, he said, oh, this was in the 50s, I think he said this, one of them. He said, how could any government fail when we have an economy uh, of an island of coal in a sea of fish? Well, you can't lose. But, you know, the government was not doing well enough. Well, OK. Resources, resources, resources. What's happened to our coal now is it's been locked in the ground and we have to buy Polish coal or somebody else's coal uh, in the name of saving the planet. And the fish have been stolen by the European Union and they want to carry on stealing them. It's to take our resources. That is what the European Union is about. It's theft. Okay, and you should applaud that as well. Okay. In fact, that... Uh, go back again, I think we've... No, no, sorry, forward, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, so I've covered that. We've covered pushing up energy prices. And the other thing it's achieved, if you like, is the kind of destruction of the genuine protest movements, you see. Because, you know, lots of friends of mine, when I was in Trotsky's groups or, or whatever, were, were, you know, I mean, we, we weren't completely mad, I want to say, but... From the outside, we might have looked mad, I, I agree. But um, we've seen people who are pro-coal and anti-nuke become anti-coal and pro-nuke. And that's sort of weird, isn't it? And now, what do they do? I don't know, I mean, maybe there's some of them rushing around now doing, doing the latest fake, uh, fake initiative of, of um, yeah, uh, well, you know, uh, break, whatever they're calling it. Uh, the end of the world coming. Anyway, the, the different varieties of end of the world pop every so often. Uh, and, and now we have uh, Extinction extinction Rebellion, or yes, Extinction Rebellion. We'll have Extinction Breakdown. Or, yeah, you know, there's combinations of Extinction, uh, Crisis, whatever, Breakdown, Rebellion, and so on, which they'll just juxtapose.